Good morning, folks. It's 8 a.m., and once again, it's time for music. First, the weather. It's raining outside and likely to continue. I know you'll love it. It's my car. No, that's yours. We interrupt this program to bring you a bulletin. Congress reacting to the Tonkin Gulf incident. Today authorized President Johnson to take any necessary actions against North Vietnam. Johnny, can't you play anything else on that thing? If you can't, will you shut it off? Do what your father says, Johnny. Come on. Just practicing. He didn't mean nothing. Bull. Howdy. But he did it. I told you to keep them kids quiet. I'm trying, Mommy. Are you ready, Patty? Go ahead. These brats are driving me nuts. Charlie? Anybody uh, want any French fries? <laughs> yes, yes, please. Oh, hey, do you want? Why don't you turn your wipers <laughs> on? Here you go. They don't work. Yeah, okay, Peggy. Come on. All right. That's right. When are we going to get to California? When we get there. It's a long ways, honey. All the way across the country. But it's going to be great. We're going to get a place near the ocean. It's always sunny there. Yeah, sunny. Just like it is here. <laughs> 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 I gotta go. Oh no. Honest, I gotta go. I'm not stopping. Try to hold it in, hon. Come on, Karen. Okay, I'll try. Oh, Karen. They're just kids. Yeah, they sure are. I spent eight years in a box, and now I'm in another box. Come on, honey. Come on. Yeah, that's really I'm gonna go real bad. I told you we're not stopping. Daddy, please. Karen really has. Well, Karen ought to learn some manners. I hate you. You're not even my real daddy. Joe. Shut up. It's time you learned some respect. Hold this. Daddy, You're real please. daddy. You were some oh. bum off the street. So you better listen to me and listen to what I tell you. Do you hear me? Daddy. Do you daddy, hear me? You gotta get gas anyway. It's all right. It's all I don't have to. Come on. Swan? Yeah. It's fine. Shut the door. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Fill her up. I'm not a baby. I don't have to go. I know. But they want to talk private. Hey, listen. Daddy is getting angry, and we must be a lot more quiet. <coughs> I'm sorry. I suppose you got a right. Karen and Charlie aren't your kids. But you were inside for eight years. And I can't handle it by myself. I'm not coming down on you for that, June. It's not just the two of them. It's all five of them. So they make noise sometimes. They're driving me nuts. It's gonna be better when we get to California. Huh. It's not gonna be any better. 
I've got to make connections. I've got to move around, meet people, go places. And I want you looking good, not dragged out all the time. I'll be all right. And Patty can handle the other kids. Sure she can. You're right. Patty's not like a kid. She can't take care of him. What do you mean? It's eight years out of my life. I don't have a lot of chances left, and I can't operate when I'm all the time boxed in. What do you mean? We gotta make the break. Get clear. They're my kids! Well, what kind of use are we to them? They're just dragging us down, June. You too. How did Sue Ann get a crippled leg? Don't you throw that up at me. It happened because there are some things you just can't... Sue Ann, that was an accident. I wasn't there. I know. I know. Look, I love them. They'd be okay. They'd be taken care of. Patty's terrific we get to L.A. clean. No. We can make it big. We can send for them later. That'll be $4.60, sir, and you get your choice of a coffee mug. What? Yeah, take your pick while I'm getting your change. Yeah, okay. Come on, come on. I'm hungry. Oh, so am I. Here you go, sir. Made up your mind yet? Yeah. Are you all right, Mommy? I'm fine. Hey, Patty. Here, I want you to buy all the kids a hamburger. Hey, no kidding. Hey, great. No. Oh, oh, Mom, please. Please. Come on, Mom. A hamburger and a drink for each. Can you handle that? Sure, but... And here. Souvenir. Can I have one, too? And that's for everybody. You can hold it, Karen. Well, now, get, get moving. Go on. We'll wait here. Thanks, Daddy. We'll be right back. Come on, guys. You can have a hamburger, Charlie. I'm going to have a cheeseburger. Joe, please. You want to go with him, June? Patty! Don't forget straws for the drinks. Sure, Mommy. Give her a dime tip. You gonna cry? No. Hey, where's the car? Uh, they had to go down the road. What for? They'll be right back. I'm hungry. I want to eat. Oh, my. Well, let's eat. Come on. Are you here? Sure, why not? 
Anyway, I'm hungry. No. You want a cheese, right? Right. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Free coffee cup if you fill up today. Shouldn't they be back by now? Maybe we should go find them. Yeah. No! Let's finish our hamburgers and we'll wait right here. Stop it, John. You might break it. So what? Where are they? Didn't they tell you where they're going? No. Maybe they're waiting for us. I'm going to take a walk down the road. John! They dumped us. No. John, they're gone and they're not coming back. They dumped us here. Well, they're probably looking for us now. I'm going to go find them. John! Listen to me. They're gone. They left us. Do you remember when Mom went away with that guy for a week and she didn't come back? And the welfare came around and they separated us? Do you remember? <laughs> we've got to stick together. And we've got to get out of sight. Come on.
here. Somebody might hear it. Oh, come on. No, John, I mean it. I'm thirsty. I want something to drink. So do I. Well, there isn't any water here. Hey, but I bet you there's some at that farmhouse we passed. That's scary. Nah. If we want something to drink, we have to go up there. Besides, if we do it right, nobody will see us. Get Charlie. Come on. We got some too. Where? We haven't finished cleaning up the shed. Well, we can finish cleaning it tomorrow. We'll sleep under the tractor tonight. There's no bed. We'll make some. How? Just by putting a whole bunch of leaves in those sacks. You'll see, it'll be fun. Coming back? I don't know. I wanted her to come back. I wanted us all to be together. <laughs> I know, Sumia. I know. But she's not coming back. We're all together and we're gonna be fine.
wash the face. like that again. Nobody goes anywhere without me. Understand? Listen, we've been eating those nuts now for almost a week, and I'm sick of them. Wait do you see what I got. You stole them? Well, the truck left them by the door, and the diner was still closed. You stole them? Yeah. <laughs> if you want any, you better get over there fast. I'll get some. I'll get it. No. All right. Be careful. I know. Keep the guns ready, but no shooting. None. You got that? There was this woman over the next county raped and killed just last week. Well, how many is there of them? A whole gang. At least three. But anybody sees anything, especially you volunteers, you just stop right there and call me. Nothing else. Just sound off. Now let's move it. Signal, Sheriff. All right. Oh, my God. Morning, bud. They're over there. What are you mad about? Three sheriffs and a bunch of meathead volunteers all jumping five little kids. Well, they weren't hurt. The report I got said No, that... no, they're all okay. Except scared, with good reason. Had a couple of things to say to the sheriff in charge, Friday's tale. Ha! 
I'll bet. <laughs> Looks like the sheriff had caught the James gang and the FBI's ten most wanted criminals in a single raid. Got them over there? Yeah. Find out anything about them? Nothing. You'll see why. Luck. Hi, I'm Bud Griggs. Actually, my real name's Abraham. That's why they call me Bud. Also, I am uh, County Director of Juvenile Court Services, which means that I'm going to try to get you kids back together with your parents. Do you know where they are? Okay. You have a right to say nothing, but I'm still going to try to help you. You want to start by telling me your names? Just for the record, because I like pictures of pretty girls. <laughs> I know you're all one family, brothers and sisters. You're sticking together, that's good. You don't trust me, that's okay. Sooner or later, you're going to have to trust somebody. Why not take a chance on me? I'll be back. Oh. It was a pleasure meeting you. zero except they are one family and this one runs it she knows all about authority she's not knuckling under to it not one inch she told me to get lost without ever saying word one i like her sounds like a troublemaker sheriff got a report from a gas station attendant near where the children were abandoned they arrived in a car with a man and woman while the kids were inside the diner the adults drove away and left them the parents i assume so in any case, they were abandoned. I can never understand. Well, we uh, can't accept this case for foster home placement until you've made identification and gotten a court disposition. I'll manage that. Oh, uh, George. I'd like to follow through on this case. Do you mind? Well, the file's in my department as soon as the court makes disposition. I've already signed Nancy to it. No, I'd just like to know what happens to him. I don't mind, George. I always enjoy working with Bud. Well, informational contact only. Understood. Uh, I'll get to work on the identification. Some food, some rest. Don't start to relax.
I'm trying to help you. But I need your help first. I want to know your names. Why you were abandoned. Left by yourselves. While your parents just drove away. How do you know that? I know some of it already. And I just have to get them by themselves, and you know they talk. But I want to be straight with you. Uh, that's John, Sue Ann, Karen, and Charlie's the baby. Our name's Clausen. Why'd they leave you? Mommy didn't want to, but... My dad was in jail for eight years. And I guess when he got out, he just wasn't used to a whole bunch of kids. Yeah, I know. Charlie's not his. Neither's Karen. A woman can get real lonely all by herself, you know. I know. Charlie and Karen are my brother and sister, and we stay together. Where are you from? Newark. That's New Jersey. Um, any family there? Grandparents? Aunts? Uncles? Just us. Well, where do you, where are your folks headed? California. I don't know where, they just said California. You gonna try and find them? Mm, we'll try, but, uh, I don't know. Unless they want to be found. No way. Patty! I saw you talking to him. We made a deal, John. Sue Ann, Karen, Charlie, Patty helped me. She talked to me. Now I'm going to try to help you. How? Well, it's my job to make a recommendation to the court so that welfare can find a place for you to live, a foster home. All of us. Together. That's what I'm going to recommend to the judge. Sure. Well. Why don't we all try another ride? Wait, huh? Charlie, look! Come on. There's one over there! Sorry I'm late, Judge. You're not. Could we close the case on this Davis boy? I think so. He's already been placed. Oh, fine. I was afraid he was going to work himself into serious trouble. But our caseload, you know when you get back on the docket. Three months. Well, what you got? The Clawson kids. Ah, <clears throat> oh, yeah. Any chance of tracing the parents? Not likely. The father's an ex-con. He knows how to stay anonymous. Yeah, well, they're clearly not fit in any case. What's your recommended disposition? Foster care. Fine. They'll go to welfare. Sir, uh, in this case, the, the oldest girl, Patty, she's really the head of the family. Uh, she looks after all the others. They're all very close. I'd like to see them stay together. Well, how? You know how difficult it is to get foster homes under any circumstances, much less ones that'll take uh, five kids. I know, but I would like to try. I've already spoken to George Matthews, and uh, he has no objection to my continuing to be involved in this case. He doesn't? Well, George usually guards his own territory pretty closely. This is a special case. And you do agree, sir, that it would be better to place these kids in one home. <laughs> I'm also in favor of peace in our time. 
Bud, you're no good as a bureaucrat. You get emotionally involved. However, if you could, I repeat, if you can arrange a multiple placement for all these kids, fine. I'll approve it. Thanks. Now, what are we going to do with Doris Pinchon? Five scared kids, but they're hanging in there because they've got a center of gravity. Patty. And how old is this wonder? Twelve. Oh, that's obscene. You know, there should be a program for dealing with parents who... Who can't parent. We get those kids in the recreation department, too. They're kids of parents who thought they wanted a toy or a pet or a diversion and couldn't handle the human being they ended up with instead. Ooh, I sound like a textbook, don't I? Mm-mm. Sounds like double talk. There's got to be a scientifically valid eugenic system. Uh, ah, here we have the engineer. There's got to be a system for matching parents and kids. There is. The all-American family. Mom, dad, sis, buddy, and rover. <laughs> Except in this case, dad's an ex-con, mom's a loser, two of the kids were illegitimate, none of them were really wanted, and if there was a rover, he'd have rabies. <laughs> hey, bud. Yeah. Telephone. Oh, excuse me. Well, Kathy, what do you think? Huh? He's nice. You too. You sound like a couple of slave dealers haggling over a new prospect. <laughs> there's, uh, there's been some trouble at the children's shelter. Some kid broke Johnny Clausen's harmonica and Patty attacked him. They've got her locked up. Kathy, I apologize. This is terribly rude. I know it, but I have to go. I understand. Well, I don't. Really, bud? <laughs> Come on. I'm sorry. So am I. <laughs> Don't lie. I want you to tell him the truth. And the truth is that you're a nice person with nice brothers and sisters. That's why I'm trying to help you. I like you. Why? That's a dumb question. This is real nice. Thanks. As I said before, it's my pleasure. Can we all stay together? I spoke to the judge about that, too, and he thinks it's a good idea, but I have to be honest with you. I've never tried anything like it in this county, in the state. The welfare department has to find foster parents who are willing to take in five kids. It's very tricky. I'll take care of them. You can tell anybody I'll take care of them. I know that. But I'm sure the judge will understand. I'm hoping he'll grant a delay in placement if we can't find a home for you right away. But we'll stay together. Hey, Patty. I think so. I'm pretty sure, but I can't give you a guarantee. I promise I'll try. No bull? No bull. Now, you get everybody ready for that hearing. We'll be ready. Don't worry. And I'll pick you up Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock. And don't worry. It'll be fine. Remember, you promised. I'll do the best I can. You promised. Hi. Hi. Can I borrow your red dress for tomorrow morning? What are you talking about? That's my best dress. I just need it for my sister for tomorrow morning. We've got a hearing. What will you give me? My dessert tonight. It's ice cream. Both your desserts. I can't. We already traded mine for some shoes for Karen, my other sister. Mm -mm. My dessert for two nights. OK. But you mess it up, and I'll kill you. Thanks. Morning, Your Honor. Morning, George. Yes, Morning, sir. bud. Let the record show that Mr. Griggs is present. 
We can take the Clawson file now. George has brought in his department's plan in uh, admirable detail. We've managed to find a foster home placement for every one of these children. What? Mm-hmm. Fully budgeted, approvals from disbursement. Uh, Judge, Nancy Sloan here of my department did a really good job on this. Mm-hmm. Your Honor, I thought that we had agreed to attempt to place these kids in one home, together. Well, yes, if you'd found such a suitable home, have you? No, uh, not yet. But we canvassed every available foster home. There wasn't a single one willing to take five children. Besides, the file is in my department. You've got no business trying to run down foster homes. They're a family. Parceling them out all over the county, that's destructive. Come on, bud. They're children. They'll adjust quickly. Judge, these are all fully qualified foster parents. Just give me more time. Uh, postponement, even. I'm sorry, bud. The matter is under welfare department supervision. They presented a perfectly acceptable plan. Bring the children in, please. They're fortunate. You know how difficult it is to find foster homes under any circumstances. Morning. Good morning, sir. You're Patty. Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Sue Ann, Karen, John, and Charlie. <laughs> I'm happy to tell you that the County Welfare Department, through Mr. Matthews here, has found you all foster homes. A social worker will conduct... Homes? You said we'd stay together. Patty, I couldn't help. But you promised. It just couldn't be helped. But you promised I'm me you'd lie. You're a liar. Stop it. You promised. Don't be too. Don't be too. Promise. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right, baby. It's going to be all right. far away from each other you'll still be able to visit real homes families you've got to understand that it's going to be the best decision for everybody the very best <laughs> only for a little while <laughs> we're gonna get back together of course you will of course you will <laughs> We have a beautiful home, Mrs. Palmer. Thank you, Patty. I know you'll be happy with us. She's a real little lady. Uh, excuse me. Is there a bathroom I could use? Of course, dear. You just go around that corner, and it's the first door on the right. Thank you. Excuse me. You know, um, she seems older than 12. Patty is very uh, mature. She's practically raised her brothers and sisters for years already. It's really irregular, but we already had a placement for the child. But I heard there was a problem. Charlie's too young. 
Well, the matter still has to be resolved. George, I have known Tom and Alice for six years. They're exceptional people. Assistant professor of engineering at the university. I'm part-time recreation supervisor at City Parks, so I'm really quite expert with kids. They're the ideal foster parents for Charlie. He's three years old. He's been through a lot. He needs somebody special. You realize, as foster parents, you will only receive $40 per month and a clothing allowance for the child. That's not important to us. We've seen the little boy. He is. George, I'm asking it as a favor. Well, it could be possible. I'll have your application processed. Oh, Thanks, good. George. Thank you very much. You'll be here in much very soon. Okay. Excuse me, George. It's Patty Clawson. She ran away from the Palmers. What happened? She opened a bathroom window, climbed out, and was gone. Do you know where she went? The child is our departmental responsibility now, bud. We'll handle it. George, I'm just concerned. I said we would handle it. Would you uh, excuse me, please? Well, it's sort of an experiment, Mr. Harrison. We hope it'll work out. Oh, I'm sure John will be very happy here in your home, Mr. Grady. We asked for a boy Danny's age. We thought it'd be nice for Danny. Yeah, you like sports, John? Uh, yeah. Throw in the ball, Danny. I don't want him using my stuff. And this is Sue Ann Clawson. Sue Ann, this is Mrs. Nelson. Sue Ann? She'll get over being so shy. I've been taking in foster kids for 15 years. We've got four others here right now. That's right. You'll be number five. Five times $40, that helps out a lot. Her paperwork processed yet? Yes, that's all done. You should get your first check in a couple of weeks. Say, want a glass of milk, Sue Ann? Uh, yes, ma'am. You just called me Mrs. Nelson. Mr. Nelson works nice, and I'm the one who takes care of you kids, so I'm going to tell you our rules. First, everybody up at 7, make up your bed, tidy up your part of the room, breakfast at 7.30 sharp. Clean up after breakfast, then you kids can play till lunch. Only don't wake Mr. Nelson. Clear so far? Yes, ma'am. When can I see Patty? I am trying to fit catch bar F in the slot F prime. I mean, this crazy thing was designed by a Martian. Are you sure he has to sleep in a crib? He's only three years old. What do you expect him to sleep in? I... A hammock? Listen, I only got two flavors. What do you think? <laughs> I usually only get one. Oh, there he is. <laughs> One package, a special D. Hi. <laughs> Charlie, you remember Tom and Alice? I remember. Hey. Oh, oh aren't you a beautiful boy? Hi. Here, what's this? Uh, a toothbrush and an extra pair of socks. Compliments to the shelter. Uh, any word on Patty yet? Uh, not yet. You worry? She's been missing for two days. Yes, uh, juvenile division, please. Mm, I'll hold. Bud, mm. this isn't really your case anymore, you know. No, not technically. Yes, uh, Sergeant Vukovic. Uh, this is Bud Griggs, Director of Juvenile Court Services. I'm inquiring about a missing There's child, my new Trisha Clawson. Yeah, foster home. Uh, have you got anything yet? What a boy. Oh. <laughs> Well, uh, I'd appreciate being notified when you do. I'm at KL52567. Right. Thanks. 
Hey, I hope you don't mind if I left him your number. No. It's too late, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at our age, it's not such a good idea. It's real easy. Use a simple formula. Love them. Goodbye, Karen. Goodbye, Mrs. Higgins. Looking for something? Uh, Miss Sloan. Well, she's out. Uh, she'll be back in a little while. I'm supposed to wait for her. Well, that's her office. You can wait in there. Are you one of her clients? No. I mean, my mother is. Thank you. Everything's in such a mess. I know. She's looking for her family. And you've been looking for her. The police told me that you contacted them. I just wanted to be informed. I told you the Clawson children are the responsibility of my department. I don't want you involved. I am trying to help. This girl broke into confidential files. She ransacked an office. When she's picked up, we'll determine what her disposition will be. Will you stop talking about her as if she's a criminal? Whatever she may be, I don't want you meddling. You can consider this an official warning. If you don't stay out of my cases and get back to your own, I'll institute administrative discipline.
Well, that's it, Sue Ann. You're going to fit in here just fine. Thanks, Mrs. Nelson. Ellen, start cooking the eggs, okay? Okay. Do you like scrambled eggs? Sure. Carl? Who rang the bell? I don't know. I was just working. Oh, yeah, I heard. I'll call the welfare office. Ask for Nancy Sloan! Go up, me! Right, if I let you go, will you stay? Yes. You'll be out that door like a shot. Why can't you trust me? Because you're a liar! They found Patty, a bud founder at Anna Nelson's. She's fine. Good. The sheriff. You didn't call the sheriff. No, no. Let's find out. Yes. Oh, Ma'am. Are you Patricia Clausen? Yes. What do you want? I was expecting a welfare case worker. The welfare office contacted us. We're going to take her in. Come on, kids. No. Just, just leave her alone. I'll take her. Let okay? go, Mike. Look, I'm Bud Griggs, director of juvenile court on, services. Kid. Leave her alone. Yeah, just, just, just let her go. Come on. Come on. Just Come on. relax. Just relax. If you want to argue about it, go argue with the welfare office, okay? Make sure that Patty's okay. I'm leaving right now. Are you here? Psychiatric evaluation done on Patty. Well, that's crazy. <laughs> there isn't a facility in this county. What, what, what did he do? Have her taken to Topeka? He ordered it done at Grandview State. What? That's for adults. I could For seriously stop it. disturbed adults. What? But, but what no. Do you he's doing. Hey. She's just a little kid. George, are you crazy? Sending a 12-year-old girl to an institution for seriously disturbed adults? Psychopaths? Grandview State happens to be the only county facility for psychiatric evaluation. She is just a kid. She'll be traumatized, scared out of her mind. Will you stop shouting? She's just going there for evaluation. The child is clearly disturbed. Runaway, theft, attempted kidnapping. You mean going after her sister? Trying to steal her sister out of a safe, secure home. Yes, she's disturbed and destructive. I've ordered a full evaluation. And on Monday, I'm requesting a full administrative review of your conduct. George, if you want an apology, I apologize. But please, be a little reasonable. She's just a kid, a frightened kid. I'm sorry. I'm not changing the order. What kind of 
for a checkup. You'll be all right. What can I do for you, Sheriff? Orders from welfare. Patricia Clausen in for evaluation. This is a kid. I know it. This is the adult hospital. Mary, I'm down there. We've got orders. We've got to. I told you this is an adult hospital. Those are orders from welfare. You What's have to accept on? them. What's she doing here? You believe it. They sent her here for an evaluation. I'm sorry, kid. i got to go to D-Ward. What are you going to do to me? Nothing. You'll just have to stay here until we get this thing all straightened out. Have a seat. Patricia Clausen. Patty. How old are you? Twelve. Do you have any family? My brothers and sisters. But they're all stuck in foster homes. I'm the oldest. My mom and dad dumped us. Charming. Look, you have to stay here, but you'll be all right. We'll get you a place to yourself, and nobody will bother you until after you've been evaluated. What does that mean? Oh, just talk to some doctors. But I'm not nuts. Somebody is. Grandview State? On what grounds? Just Patty's an habitual runaway, antisocial, and in need of psychiatric evaluation. Welfare's issued a specific order? Yes. Can you get her out? Well, it's not that simple. There has to be a hearing. However, I could speed up the process, order an immediate evaluation. How immediate? She's a 12-year-old kid locked up in a high-security insane asylum. I'll see that it takes place tomorrow. Thanks, Judge. So you talk to the evaluating doctors tomorrow, first thing. What are they going to do to me? Find out you are a normal, healthy, nice kid and get you out of here so you get a good night's sleep. been with her most of the night. I know it's dumb, but I keep thinking my mom can come and get me. 
But I know she can't. Oh, it's so dumb. It isn't dumb. Everybody needs... All you get is me. your head shrunk. Oh, don't worry. It'll be okay. Thank you. Goodbye, Patty. Terry Sullivan. You're doctors? That's right. I'm a psychiatrist and Terry's a psychologist. They tested me at school. I'm all right. That's what Bud says. But he's prejudiced. He likes you. It's not difficult, Patty. They just want to talk to you, find out more about you. Can you stay with me? No. Rules. I'll wait for you, though, okay? Okay. What do I do? Whatever you like. Sit, stand, walk around, look out the window. Let's begin with you. Tell us about your brothers and your sisters. How you feel about being here. That's a dumb question. I hate it here. And I'm not crazy. I'm sorry. It's okay. Say whatever you want. We're not judging you. We just want to get to know you, how you feel. How do you think I feel? I feel awful. All right, doctors. Go ahead. To be brief, Patty Clausen has a decidedly higher than average intelligence. She's extraordinarily mature. She's been surrogate parent for some time to her younger siblings. At this time, she's anxious, depressed, and very angry. She has every right to be angry. She's been treated with staggering insensitivity. She's been virtually imprisoned simply because she tried to reunite her family. We strongly recommend that you release her from Grandview State and make another attempt at placing her in a foster home. A copy of our report will be filed with the court, of course. Do you have any questions, Mr. Matthews? No. None. I find your report admirably... Concise. Clear. What, may I ask, do you intend to do about it? Well, act on it, of course. That's wonderful, George. Uh, before you proceed, there is something that I'd like to discuss with you about... Believe me, I'll take whatever actions I do. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sullivan, <clears throat> Dr. Carson. History, evaluation, possessions envelope. Okay, she's all yours. Please. I'm sorry. Mr. Matthews ordered it. I mean, I don't think. I'm sorry. call to Mr. Griggs. No outside calls or visitors until after your probationary period is over. How long is that? Two weeks. 
Why'd they put me in prison? This is not a prison, Patty. It's a minimum security facility. It's got a high wire fence. It's a lousy prison. That attitude isn't going to help you here, Patty. Hey, there's only one thing going to help you here, Chicky. Getting to be 18 so you can get out. That's enough, Linda. Come on, we'll issue your clothing and bedding. She'll find out. Gee, Johnny looks mean. He's having some, uh, well, some trouble with his foster parent's son. I think the kid's jealous. Yeah, look at Sue Ann. She's put on some weight. She always eats a lot when she's not happy. Karen, she just gets real quiet. Hey, you're going to see them. Sure. Patty. You've held out a month already. Just hold on a little bit longer, okay? Thanks. You don't believe me? No, I don't believe you or anybody else. Nothing's gonna happen except I'm gonna stay locked up in this place and you're gonna keep on making me promises. And nothing's gonna happen. Patty? You want the photos? What for? I remember my family. I don't need pictures. That's it? Yeah. Well, it's big enough. And it's, uh, in... Well, it's in lousy shape. But it's cheap. I'm ready to put up half the money to lease the house for a year. At least to get us started. That'd give us some time to get some funding. Try to get some other caseworkers involved. Stop it, bud. We haven't even agreed to anything. That's true. We thought about it. That's all. Yeah, I know. Will you stop being so agreeable? I'm sorry that I keep thinking of how much it would mean to those kids. Five kids. Four. You've already got Charlie. Do you realize what we'd be taking on? Trying to be foster parents to an instant family. It's just an idea. Of course, uh, Patty's perfectly capable of helping out with the other kids. She's been doing it all her life. Oh. <laughs> I know it's an outrageous thing to think about, but will you two just think about it? Seriously. Think yes. Agree, no. I'll settle for that. I can't believe it. Why isn't he arguing with us? Leaning on us? He is. No! I repeat, N-O. Settle, okay? How's Patty? Holding herself together, mostly. It's been a month now. Last time I spoke to her, she said she was getting used to it. And that scared her. I think she's going to try to break out of that reform school. That'll be a criminal act, of course. All right, bud, that's enough. Just stop, will you please? Will you stop pressuring us, bud? The other kids. John's back in the children's shelter. His foster parents say their son can't stand him. I'll put up all the money. No, you won't. We'll put up half. It will help get the place fixed up. But I am still not agreeing to foster parent that army. <laughs> Come on. Take a look. Hi, bud. Hey. 
Nancy. I just found out what you're trying to do. You know, of course, that it's crazy. You mean it's not in the code of administrative procedure? I mean, I think it's terrific. You're the only person I know who can make it happen. Everybody in the office is talking about it. Everybody? I hope you don't mean everybody. No, no, Matthews doesn't know. Nobody's going to tell him either. Thanks. <laughs> well, it doesn't really even matter. I mean, once this is a reality, once it's done, Matthews will just have to go along with it. Is that a guarantee? Listen, bud, for whatever it's worth, I mean, anything that I could do at all, I would love to help. Thanks, Nancy. It's corny, I know. It's hopelessly sentimental, but I could just get those kids in here by Christmas Eve. Oh, you will. Hey, bud. Yeah. Bud, could you come? Hi, Nancy. Could you come up here and give me a hand, please? Sure. How about me? Yes, please, hurry. There's a mantle about to fall on my foot. <laughs> Charlie's still doing great. My friends Tom and Alice really love him. I think he loves them. Uh, I spoke to Sue Ann, uh, gave her your letter, and uh, she's, she's doing much, much better. Can any of them visit me here? I'm afraid not, Patty. It's not allowed. They're too young. But I'm working on something. Sure you are. I think it is marvelous what you and Tom are trying to do. Well, we haven't decided anything yet. But maybe. Girls, you have to choose which color is best for John's bedroom. Definitely that one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> ha. Just might. Ooh. Well, come on. Five kids means five bedrooms, and we haven't even finished the dining room. Going back to your family, Patty, baby. Okay, you asked for it. Good, Patty. Not 
Crazy, out of your mind, irresponsible. You're lucky you didn't escape. Yeah. Yeah. They'd have picked you up in an hour, and you would have had a serious criminal charge on your record. What would they do? Shove me in the slammer? I am trying to get you out! You know that! I'd like to believe you. But I don't. Nothing's gonna happen. I'm just gonna stay in here. I try and remember how Johnny looks. Or I sit here trying to remember Sue Ann. Or how big Charlie is. down because I just can't stand not remembering anymore Penny you are going to see them Officially certifying you as approved foster parents, Professor Parks and Mrs. Parks, specifically within the definition of this order. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Judge. Uh, but this is only court permission. You'll need a specific order from welfare. I'll get it. From George Matthews on the day before Christmas? Come on, bud. I'll get it. just don't have the authority to sign those release and transfer orders on those kids. Why not? I'm the head of a department. That is just a technicality. Matthews is going to blow the roof when he finds out about this. Probably. What's this? You can't resign? I haven't. Not yet. It's dated tomorrow. Why? Nancy. Just see that he gets that after the holidays, okay? Hey. Merry Christmas. I will see you at the house. Yes. get me out? Lied, cheated, forged, swindled. Is that how you got me this new outfit? No, I had some help. Do you like it? Oh, yeah. Looks great. Thanks. When do I have to go back in? You just got out. Let's worry about that later. Where are you taking me? You'll see.
listen. I know you promised, and that's okay. And I know you really tried to help us. I just wanted you to know that. All right. What a beautiful tree. All these presents. Who lives here? Some people I know. Because a young girl had the courage to confront an entire system and to fight for her piece of human dignity, the system started to change. Brothers and sisters were reunited, only this time with responsible adult models to grow up with. Today, there is a nationwide network of family care centers designed to keep such